So at first, all summer long, I was soliciting good questions from the congregation in order to develop themes for each Sunday, and we had a lot of really good questions asked. Today, I want to pose the question, why do you love your church? Because we go through a lot of effort for church, and if we're doing it for something that we don't love, well, that would be kind of sad. So I want you to be thinking about why you love your church. And I want to try to answer that myself. And I want to start off by saying that I love Christianity. It might seem obvious that I would love Christianity. I was raised in a Christian family. We went to church every Sunday. I was raised in a culture that was permeated by Christian thought. But maybe it's not that obvious. It might explain why I'm Christian, but it doesn't explain why I love Christianity. There are plenty of people that were born into Christian families, raised in Christian culture, who profess no faith or simply go through the motions of faith. Maybe loving faith, maybe loving Christianity is a little bit deeper than simply being Christian. One of the reasons I love Christianity is because Christianity is built on the idea of paradox. That in God, two competing things are held together in union with one another. Shane Claiborne describes God this way. He says, the great paradox and humor of God's audacious power. A stuttering prophet will be the voice of God. A barren old lady will become the mother of a nation. A shepherd boy will become their king. And a homeless baby will lead them home. He wrote that in the book Jesus for President, oh, 15 years ago or so. Great book if you ever want to pick it up and read it. But I love that description that God was calling what would seem to be the wrong kind of people. Throughout Jewish and Christian teaching, God continually seems to pick the wrong kind of people. Yet time and again, the wrong people are led to amazing things through the work and wonder of God. There's something in there that speaks really powerfully to me. That we human beings, we might spend our entire lives trying to be right. Trying to be the right kind of child for our parents. Trying to be the right kind of student for our teachers. Trying to be the right kind of spouse for our partners. Trying to be the right kind of employee for our bosses. We might spend our whole lives trying to be the right kind of people, yet God never seems to need the right kind of people. And I love that. God just needs people who are willing. And half the time you don't even need to be willing. God will still use you in some amazing way. So that's the first thing that, about Christianity that I really love, that we are a faith built on this paradox of not needing to be right. The second thing I love about Christianity is Good Friday. That on Good Friday we see this perfect example of God choosing to know us and love us fully. On Good Friday, Jesus is alone in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's asked his disciples to stay awake and pray with him, but of course, what do they do? They fall asleep. Now, when they are sleeping, Jesus could have left the garden. No one would have been any the wiser. They would have simply have thought, Jesus has disappeared. It's been a miracle. Jesus has been rescued from this fate. fate. Jesus could have left, slunk away in the night, and no one would have known the difference. Jesus, the incarnation of God, chooses to go through suffering and pain and loneliness, because God knows those are the things that we're going to go through, and chooses to know us fully. Good Friday is a reminder to me that my faith was born in a moment of struggle. And one of the core tenets of Christian faith is that God exists 
in the struggle with us. That's the beauty of an incarnation God, that we do not struggle alone. And the final thing that I want to share that I love about Christianity is the mere concept of love itself. It was shared so beautifully when Allison read Paul's words on love. And there's a lot that I struggle with when I read Paul. When I read what he says about love, that is a thing of beauty to me. I remember years back I was singing a paraphrase of that Corinthians passage that was written by John Bell. The song went a little something like this. Should I rehearse with human voice the words which angels make their choice? Devoid of love, my song resounds magnificent but empty. And should I preach with earnest tone, and know whatever can be known, and move the hills by faith alone, if I lack love, I'm nothing. I sang that in a period in my life when I was really discerning if I was being called into ministry. Questioning if I had the gifts for this work of ministry. And that song was like a personal invitation to me, a personal message from me. That our faith is not about getting it right. Our faith is not knowing the right things at the right time. Our faith is solely about getting the work of love. Right. If we lack love, we're nothing. If we've gotten love right, then we've gotten Christianity right. And if we get love wrong, then there's still work we need to do. This is why I love Christianity, but this is not why I love the church. So let me tell you why I love Methodism. And it might seem obvious again. I was raised in a Methodist church. I was one of the youngest lay speakers in the former Troy Conference. I spent a lot of time at church growing up. I went to the oldest Methodist seminary in North America. Literally, the first thing you see when you walk in the doors is that cross and flame hanging on the wall. So it might seem obvious that I would love Methodism. But it was as I learned more about the Methodist doctrine learn more about Methodist beliefs, that's when I really started to fall in love with this Methodism thing. As I encountered the powerful understanding of grace that is found in Methodist doctrine, I fell in love. If there is one doctrine that we can use to define Methodism, it is our doctrine of grace in all its wonderful forms. Grace is there before we could possibly realize its presence. Grace is there as we take our first hesitant steps towards a relationship with God. And grace is there as we are ever shaped <coughs> into the vision God has for our lives. In Methodism, grace is almost personified as the expression of God's perfect love in the world. Not something we earn. Not something we achieve. It is simply defined as the way God wants to interact with us. God could choose any way to interact with us. God chooses to do it through grace. Something freely offered to us by the one who created the entire universe. I spent a summer living in Vermont. And I was renting a room in this house, and behind the house there was this large, empty field. And one night I went out there, the air was still, there was no sound, and I laid in that field. And it was so dark, you could see the grand expanse of the heavens above. And I remember in that moment reciting Psalm 19. Now I don't know if I spoke it out loud or if it was just reciting it in my thoughts. I remember the words, the heavens declare the glory of God. I was thinking about the Psalms a lot in those times. 
Psalm 19 was something that always brought me this sense of wonder and comfort. And those words just came naturally as I gazed at the sky above, at the depths of the heavens above. The heavens declare the glory of God. At that moment, I truly believed it. That I was gazing upon God's glory in a way I never had before. I kind of maybe felt for the first time what John Wesley might have felt when he said that his heart was strangely warmed. It's a feeling I've chased ever since. I spent maybe an hour or two out in that field that night. And as my thoughts turned from the glory of God, they began to turn to my own life. I thought about how in the midst of the glory that God had created, all the wonder, all the splendor that God had created, that in the midst of all of this, God would still want me personally to know that I was loved. Still wanted me personally to have an experience of the grace of God. I thought about how small all the things I was worrying about were. And in those days, I had a lot of worries. I thought about how small all my anxieties were. And still to this day, I have a lot of anxieties. I thought about how small all of that was. And yet how God still wanted to care for me. God still wanted to cut through all the noise of my life with the love of grace. I fell in love with the way the Methodist Church teaches us to experience the grace of God. But that's not why I love my church. I've told you why I love Christianity. I've told you why I love Methodism. Here's why I love my church. And it goes back to that reading from John when Jesus offers a new commandment that we love one another. I love my church when we live that commandment, when we embody that commandment. And I know we don't always get it right. I know I don't always get it right. But I love my church because at its best, at its ideal, it is a place where love can abound. Now the church can be a mighty, messy place. Every church I have served, every church I have worshipped in, has its messes. Has its places of struggle and hardship. But at its core, the church for me has become a place where the love of God can meet the world in need. Where the love of God can meet the struggles within. Where the love of God can be put into action. I love my church because in the midst of the messiness, the confusion, the brokenness, the church is the place where I experienced the love of God. That's my answer to the question, why do I love my church? I want all of you to have an opportunity to answer that as well. In the back corner over here, there's going to be some boards up that have the words, why I love my church written on them. I can't put them up right now because the wind keeps knocking them over. But after the service, I'm going to put those back up. There's some markers on one of these tables around here. Grab a marker. Find the poster that coordinates with your church. I've got the names of the three churches written on little post-its on each of them. And write down the reason you love your church. And let's try to fill those boards up as best we can so we can make a great testimony of all the many ways we love our church. And I'm going to offer this to the folks at first. Anyone else can do this as well, but I have a camera that I'm going to set up. And if you want to record an answer to that, I would love to be able to share some of the reasons that folks are loving their church with our entire community. So if you feel comfortable recording a response to that question, let me know and I will find a way to get you on camera. But right now, let's be in prayer together. And let's, in our praying, be, remind, be mindful of the ways that we've been called to love one another and to love God. Let's pray. Wondrous, amazing Lord, we come to you right now, such a beautiful day. 
in this amazing community, in this wondrous thing we call church. Lord, we thank you for giving us this amazing gift. These moments when we can be community together. And we thank you for these amazing opportunities we have to share our love with one another. Lord, continue to help us experience your love pouring into our lives day in and day out. And help us to become the kind of people who share your love as widely as we can. Lord, shape us in love and shape us <coughs> For love. In Christ I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.